everybody. Thank you for joining us for this uh, one hour session. My name is Fola Shadi Adeloye. I'm a, I'm a succession planning practitioner uh, with ARM trustees. And I have with me today my colleagues, uh, Israel Kole Dewell, a tax expert with Anderson Tax, and Zvian Hudenschild, a wealth expert and estate planning expert with IPG. And uh, what we want to do today is to give you some tips and give you uh, some structures that would help you in preserving your wealth and your assets in times of uncertainty. Now, uh, these are times that we've had to be faced with situations that we've never faced before in our lives. And so we, we're faced with, you know, erosion of oil prices, uh, declining um, oil prices. Um, we've, we've been faced with, uh, with impending uh, a recession. And uh, there's also the question of, um, of, 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 of being faced with our mortality on a daily basis. And so it is, it is impossible that the thoughts of your health and protection of your assets, few or many as they may be, hasn't crossed your mind. These are thoughts that we've probably all had to deal with in the last few months. And the tips I will be sharing with you today are things that will give you rest of mind and also give you enough information to take certain informed decisions. And so my colleagues and I will speak with you on estate planning, um, wealth planning, investment options, and very briefly also uh, tax planning. And what really is estate planning? It is really looking at your assets and looking at how you can build protection on those assets in a way that those assets can be transferred you know, through generations. And so you're looking at intergenerational wealth transfer. And there are even structures that you can use that you can begin to see how those assets will be preserved and how those assets will be managed while you're alive and well. And so what I will do in the next slide is just give you different options that you can look at. And, and so there are multiple ways that you can put together an estate plan. And I would start with the power of attorney. And the power of attorney is really the most basic. And what really is a power of attorney? You could have a medical power of attorney or a financial power of attorney. And for us at ARM trustees, we encap this in what we call the incapacity solution. And what the power of attorney does is, it means that you have appointed a person that you trust to hold authority and to take decisions for you in case you become incapacitated. There are those of us in this practice that have witnessed people who have become incapacitated or have had to be on life support and they had a lot of assets, financial assets, and the family could not access those assets because they were incapacitated. So if you don't have any estate planning structure yet, the most basic that you should have is a medical or a financial power of attorney. Uh, another option that you could look at in planning your estate is a will. Now this is the most, is age old, is uh, the most popular and the most well known. Um, however, given the technicalities of wills, uh, they are easily contestable. And what is a will if, I mean, I mean, I'm sure most of us know what it is, but just very simply is you just writing down, expressing how you wish your assets to be distributed. And this means that until you pass on, this will not happen. And so the downside is you don't, those that you name as executors or administrators of your assets, you don't really know how they will behave. You don't know whether they'll be slothful in distributing your assets. You don't know whether they will follow your wishes. Another downside is the estate tax. Um, across jurisdictions from Nigeria, it could range from 10% to other jurisdictions that could be as high as 40%. So you would have to pay an inheritance tax after all the assets listed in the will are valued by the government. Uh, more popular these days is joint assets, joint ownership. And what joint ownership means is that together with your spouse or with your children, you can decide to hold an asset. And what it means is that the survival is the person that retains the legal title it is not an incomplete, it is an incomplete estate plan. It is not a complete estate plan, just like the power of attorney. It is not a complete estate plan. And what do I mean by that? It means that these are only useful while you are alive. In fact, when you have a joint asset structure, when the person that is a survivor dies, that person must have made 
must make arrangements for how that asset will be passed to whoever he or she has nominated. Uh, you could decide to use a deed of gift. A deed of gift is a gift in life. So for instance, you live in a house, you could decide to give the house to your third child. But what would always warn is if you decide to go by way of deed of gift, remember that you are ceding control and you are ceding authority to that asset. And that means that whoever you have gifted that asset to could sell the property. And we've said, we've seen cases where a parent gifted a gift to a child and the child sold the asset while the parent was probably still living in the house. Uh, so again, that's a downside of using a deed of gift, but with a deed of gift, you can at least avoid or manage the inheritance taxes. Uh, a very common form, in, in, especially in countries like Nigeria, is a holding or investment company structure. And we saw a lot of this in the 80s, into the 90s, and even still recently. And it means that the patriarch or matriarch of the family would set up a company, an investment company, where he or she and the children and other dependents hold shares in that company. And that company holds assets for the family or could even be the, the family business, you know. And again, the downside for this sort of structure is that it is also an incomplete estate plan because if the shareholders die, they must have a structure that distributes their holdings in the company. And, and, and so before you decide to use a holding company structure, you must look at some of those downsides. Uh, there would also be issues in taking decisions. You know, once, once, once you're shareholders and you, you have to participate in annual general meetings, there could be situations where you could have deadlock. And this could be very difficult in moving ahead as a family. Um, so think about that before you look at that uh, structure. Another that we could look at is life insurance. And Sven will speak about this. You could decide to have an investment that you then name your trust or list in your will, you know, so that the payout can be distributed as stated in your trust or in your will. Now, one of the most efficient structures that you can look at today, again, especially in jurisdictions like Nigeria that they're still tax efficient is the trust. And with the trust, you are looking at a dual ownership of assets where legal ownership of those assets is moved to a trustee and beneficial ownership remains in you and your named beneficiaries. And those beneficiaries don't necessarily have to just be your children or your dependents. It could also be foundations and charities that you support. And what a trust does is there's just a seamlessness, you know, in terms of wealth and asset transfer through generations. And today, companies like ours are managing second generation trusts where those who set up the trust have passed on and we are able to manage the next generation and the challenges that come with that generation in terms of preserving that wealth for the family. So these are some of the structures that you can look at. Some ex can, can exist together. Uh, you could have just one, you could decide to have just a will or you could have a trust and at the side we would also have a will uh, that can take care of your personal assets or some assets that you specifically want to gift. And, and so if we look at the next slide really is, what are the benefits if you decide to go the way of a trust? There is confidentiality. Um, it is contestable in the court of law, but because the technicalities are fewer than that of a will. So, so it, it, it is not just thrown out there in the open. And while a will is basically a public document, a trust is not a public document. I've spoken about the seamlessness. If the creator of the trust dies, very easily the trustee can release funding for burial arrangements uh, and things just go on seamlessly. There is no case of freezing the estate like when you have a will and you need to get probates and you need to get all the assets in the other jurisdictions sealed and you don't have all of that with a trust. Uh, in terms of tax savings, it is a good tax plan and Israel will also speak to that. Uh, when you have a trust, income can be reinvested and at distribution, the beneficiaries have the obligations to then pay their taxes. So that means that you can actually defer. And from an asset protection perspective, when you use a trust, you are protected from third party creditors because the legal title has moved to a, tr a trustee. A will, it has its disadvantages, but it has its advantage. Greater advantage really is it serves as an inventory of your assets. So when you have a, decide to write a will as an estate plan, it means that all your assets are listed out most of the time in detail in that will. 
and whatever is not listed there falls into what we call the residual clause and that can be easily identified by your executors but one of the greatest challenges of a will apart from a lack of confidentiality i mean we've seen so many wills that we've we've read in the past that are in the public in the public space uh, one of the greatest challenges of a will is really the efficiency of your executors so if you want to go the way of a will we would always advise that you you use a corporate executor to to um as executor and even if you have people as executors you want to add a corporate executor for 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 many reasons we spoke about the incapacity solution and so that is really the power of attorney and like i had i said at the beginning if you don't have any of this you just want to make sure that you have an incapacity solution because if anything happens to you and you're still alive um on you know and you're unable to take decisions yourself you want somebody that you trust to take those decisions for you so that things are not in limbo and this is the most basic that that everybody should have and so what we would like to do is to just like i said at the beginning leave you with enough information to to access these solutions and to come back to us to access some of these solutions so i would like to Zvian speak to you about some wealth management tools a specific wealth management tool uh, in the form of life insurance that you can also use in preserving your assets and making sure that it is passed on to the next generation Zvian? 